and let's have our chat. Uh, okay, so uh, is that what we want to start with, guys? We want to start with just establishing how often we're going to meet and when, or, I mean, there's only three of you here right now, although I'm expecting a couple more in. Um, you know, do we want to do this monthly? I don't think we are at the point where we need to have that super intense every week to every two week schedule that we were keeping with the regs near the end. I don't think we're under the same kind of time pressure. Um, but what do you guys think? I'm for it. Dave You're for what specifically? Well, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> If, if, if we want to do it once a month, uh, I'm okay with that. Or do you, how, how, what's our time frame? What are you looking for for a time frame? Well, I have an ideal time frame that I'd like to hit, but I, uh, unlike the POCD and the regulations, um, which had more urgency, um, I think we are under less. Uh, urgency to correct this, although I wouldn't want to let it go too long. You know, we don't want to be in contradiction for for too long. I mean, but I'd what, like to have it wrapped by the end of June, uh, at least the drafting part, and then, you know, whatever the public hearing process is after that. Uh, but I don't think we have to, yeah, I don't think we have to have our hair on fire for that. Tara, can I make a suggestion? John Rice? Of course you may, John Rice. Um, Previously, what we did, because as you can see, what there's three or four people from the commission out of 13, uh, is that we set aside after the meeting, the regular meeting, and we set a time frame of nine o'clock. In other words, our meetings at seven, if it lasts a half an hour, we're good for an hour and a half. If it lasts an hour, then we, but we, we, we have in the past set the the time frame would say nine o'clock and whatever we get done during that time. My suggestion. Um, I, I would say, John, that the the pattern with the PNZ meetings is that they've been going a full two hours. I mean, this last one we had went almost three. I don't think you're going to give yourself enough time if you're not doing it as a standalone meeting. Um, I think and because, I think you I think you could take some time within any regular meeting to discuss small sections of it. I think that would work. That it's the last meeting was really unusual. We never have a three hour meeting. I, I think we were my input on that was we, we were trying to find a way to skirt around our regulations and not imp, not impose um not necessarily of, uh, you know, to, you know, to, to me, <laughs> to, to stick with our regulation. Our regulation stated what that could be done on that application, and we danced around it for an hour, which uh, on that one item. So I, like I say, my put is to spend an hour, then you hopefully probably have 10 or 12 members there at the regular meeting and we'll spend the time. If that doesn't work, then we'll adjust it. Uh, okay, how about this? Um, Kira? How, yeah, who's that? It's Gloria. Um, has, Hi, this Gloria. Meeting, has this meeting officially opened? Do we have a roll call? Do we do that on a special meeting? Oh. It, it's on the agenda, so we, there there is no chairman though, because um, John Rice because Joe's it. not going to make it. Yeah, John John's an officer, so he can he can do a role well, for your for your minute. But can be appointed if you if, the, if we did it with before we you, you can have somebody appointed to do, to to run the meeting. But uh, Mr. Rice should, if he wants to, he should pretty much open up the meeting. So it, this way we don't have to do a uh, worry about somebody. Uh, saying, you, well, how can you have a meeting if you didn't have somebody open up, set the meeting up? I'd have to, uh, I'd have to pull up the agenda, which I don't have. Uh, what, what was, it, what was on the agenda? Did it say- It's, it's, almost, it's almost nothing, John. Hold on, I'll, I'll pull it up on the screen. Give, give me a second. 
Hey, guys, I'm in at the meeting on my phone. Something happened to my Internet. Okay. I was wondering who that was. That's me, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission agenda. And share screen. You got that, John? So it's just a call to order, roll call, review and discussion of subdivision regs, determine schedule for subcommittee meetings, and adjournment. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, if I will, if you want me, Mr. Lenke, I'll open the meeting. Oh, where's my time on this thing here? 7, 7.06 p.m., call to order, roll call of all members. John B. Present. Go ahead. I'm sorry, John, to interrupt. But That's okay. John B. Lanky, present. Okay. okay. Um, Chair, I think the internet's back on, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank How do I get off my phone? Just hang on. Sorry, Cindy. Once you're logged in. Yeah. Once you're logged in, you can just go out. Um, so, John, if you can't see them in your oh. window, I can see them in mine. So, John B. Lanky has announced himself. Alvin Hill. Alvin Hill, present. Dave Poplowski. Dave Poplowski, present. And John Rice. John Rice, present. Okay, so there, there are your four commissioners yeah. present. And just for, for the record, could the other people that's attending this meeting identify themselves so uh, Gloria can put that in the record who attended? Good point. All right, uh, Cynthia Dunn, ZEO, also in attendance, and Tira Pengesic, Director of Planning and Development. And I will let you know as other people come in. Okay. Okay, item two. We'll discuss these. Oops. Yeah, oh, I was just bringing up the subdivision regulations, that annotated copy. Okay, so I don't think we're going to get too far into these uh, tonight, and also with a small group, it's probably not um, super appropriate to dive too deeply into it. Alvin has given me uh, a number of different comments, uh, which I've carried into this annotated draft as best I could. Um, in fact, some of him, some of his comments appear as mine because I, I dropped them in later. Um, and that comes up under my ID. Uh, David Hell did provide a lot, as I was saying earlier, a lot of good comments, um, particularly around uh, some of the issues we know we have to resolve, uh, the shared drives, the interior lots. Um, so I guess let's start with folks' general impressions. Uh, you know, where do we, uh, where do we notice things that, that might be troublesome? Um, what specific things uh, did you flag as you were going through uh, either the regu subdivision regulations on their own or the annotated versions? Uh, may as well go in order of how we were called in the role. John B. Lenke? Well, well my, before we go any further, when I was looking at this, the, uh, you got those little comments on the side. Some of them will be Alvin or yours. This is where the subjects have to be. This is the where the verbiage has to be changed, or think. Well, those were those were my, those were my observations, um, okay. and we can discuss those specifically. Or if you had additional comments, or you wanted to piggyback on any of those comments, that's that's I guess what we what I'd be looking for in this general first meeting. Okay. Sarah, can I interject here? And just let me question the people, the PNZ members. They they received that hard copy that I sent to everybody, uh, them in the separate envelope that Gloria meant, sent out. Uh, my intention at that is that it's, it's exactly what Tara's shown on the screen. That her all of her comments on there. And my intention was that if everybody got that in the mail, 
they could write comments, their own comments in that column. So as we're going along, uh, you know, just prepared so it wouldn't take so long. Uh, I, I would think that we would uh, start with going through each section. In other words, if we look at section one, anybody have any comments or corrections with that? Then we go to section two. Uh, anybody have any comments? Then we, can, we definitely can read what the planner uh, said that, and then we would approve that section, then go into section three, et cetera, et cetera. Is, does that okay, we, we can dive right into it if you want, John, if that's what everybody wants. I was trying to keep it more general with this first one, but I, I'm always happy to dive straight in. Yeah, uh, Mr. Rice, did, yes. um, Conservation just sent out an email questioning with some, co Carolyn had some comments that are not on the the paper, you know, th this copy. So it seems like not everybody's comments, if we're going to review them, are, are already transcribed onto this. Right. We can we can postpone discussing her and she had, but but really what what that paper is saying is that the when we uh, accept open space in a subdivision. It's really spelt out in our regulations what that uh, open space can be used for. And it looks like to me, uh, whether it's conservation or the selectmen, so that they're trying to uh, just sell that open space that they're designated. Uh, yeah. I think we would have to, I think maybe what Carolyn is suggesting is to look at that when we get to it is to change uh and but we better look at what the state says uh for the requirement of open space or taking money you know does, do we have that option in there is that if the uh, applicant or the developer doesn't want to uh give up land then he pays he pays uh, uh whatever that you're land talking about the fee the fees in lieu right yeah right so yeah. that I mean we can tackle that when we get to that in the in a subdivision, but I don't think oh, I thought there was yeah, I'm sorry. I thought she had I just looked at it real quick before we got on the, the call and I, I thought she had more comments than just the open space. Sorry. Well, it might no, be I, I did look at them. I, I did look at them right before I left the office this afternoon, Dave. And uh, there are a number of comments, but they are almost all exactly the same or a version of the same. It's it's that one set of um of requests that we explicitly say within the subdivision regulations that um, the open space parcel or portion of the parcel be delineated on the plan and that the purpose of that open space, if it's for recreation or I think agricultural or use, I think there's a number of acceptable uh, ways that you can categorize open space. Um, you know, specifically conservation I'm, land or, or whatever. I'm not sure. So I'm he, not sure, Tara, that we categorize the open space. It's it's what it can be used for, and there's an option of that open space. Uh, but it it the intention was is to keep it open space. That, that's why we got it, not to sell it. I I can tell you uh, the reason uh, is that there is an individual that. Uh, there's some open space in town that we accepted and there's a neighbor that would like to buy that open space. And uh, I don't think that was the intent of, of uh, getting the open space in a subdivision, but I guess that's for discussion at a later time. Okay. Yeah. In fact, I, I'm also aware of, a, of an instance where there's a, a, a um, an individual looking to purchase some land that, although it's not clearly marked as open space, seems clearly to have been put aside as open space. The person I'm thinking of actually wants to keep it as open space. He just happens to want to own it. So, I, so that's a gray area, but we might be talking about two different people. Uh, so we won't go too far down that. And that's the specific application for the commission to deal with later anyway. Uh, but if you guys want to dive in, I'm, I'm all for. Uh, I like orderly progression. Well, 
if we weren't going to dive in, what was your your other suggestion at the beginning, Tara? Well, it just since was... you know people have had a little time with the annotated uh, division, if they just had general comments that they wanted to make, but we can go we can go in order. I'm I actually find that personally more useful. Uh, I was just trying to be well ease people into it <laughs> as as i mentioned not me i think uh is the, that's why i sent it out to everybody rather than trying to do it on your computer and making notes uh exactly what you had sent us and uh would we'll just tell you what i did and when i'm reading through it i made specific notes in that column that i wanted to discuss Okay. Well, let, maybe, let's... maybe if we sent something out, I know I didn't explain it. I just put it in a package and I was going to discuss it at the at our meeting, our last meeting, uh, what my intentions were for main, mailing it out. But uh, after nine o'clock, I don't I don't think anybody wanted to listen to me anyway. So I never came. All right. Well, let's let, let's charge ahead then. Article one, uh, general provisions, section one, title. These regulations shall officially be known, cited, and referred to as the subdivision regulations of the town of Thompson, Connecticut, here and after these regulations. I presume we're all pretty okay with that. I'm good does, with it. Does everybody have a copy of that? Oh, you, you're reading it here anyway. Okay. I see it on the screen. I'm just looking at my hot copy. Go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. John, I don't know if I even got one of those. I'm, I've been going off the computer. I don't know if I got one in the mail from you. They were mailed to you uh, quite a while, about last week. Yeah, it, it was mailed before the agenda was mailed out because yeah. when Gloria was there to do the agenda, whatever day that was, I think it was Wednesday prior to the meeting, she mailed them out that day. Yeah, I got Cindy's, you know, Cindy's, um, Yeah, I'm looking, I don't see anything. But anyways, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, the mail's been kooky anyway. Section two, authority and public purpose. Letter A, the Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Thompson here and after commission, actually that should be the commission, is vested by the Connecticut General Assembly through Title VIII, Chapter 124 and one, Chapter 126 as amended of the statutes of the state of Connecticut with the authority to review, approve, conditionally approve, and disapprove applications for the subdivision of land, including sketch, preliminary, and final proposals. The commission may grant waivers from these regulations in accordance with Article One, Section Eight of these regulations. Uh, any objections to anything or comments on anything under that item? And just for in case the way I, I usually do, whenever just for the members of there and take my advice if or you don't is that when you see something like that when it mentions Article One, Section Eight. Uh, Article one is what we're in right now, but if you go to section eight, that refers to waivers. So this is what you're approving, you know? Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead, Tara. So I what don't you have, have to... any problem with section eight, if anybody else does. So, so... I mean, section two A, right? I would just underline that and to make sure that um, in the new regulations, it's the same article and same section. Make yep, sure. and that is actually what I what I've done, Cindy, is to make notes to go back and compare them when we're done with the with whatever this draft is. Okay. Uh, item B: Regulation of the subdivision of land and the attachment of reasonable conditions to land subdivision is an exercise of valid police power delegated by the state to this municipality. State should be capitalized. The developer has the duty of compliance with reasonable conditions laid down by the Planning and Zoning Commission for design, dedication, improvement, and restrictive use of the land to conform to the physical and economic development of the municipality and to the health, safety, and general welfare of the future lot owners in the subdivision and of the community at large. Uh, and the only suggested change I made here is a very minor one uh, that I seems to me that linguistically that should be any you, applicant or developer. Yeah. Would, would it be proper, uh, Tara, just put the, the applicant slash developer? Um, well, not necessarily. Can. Applicant is sometimes it's different from the developer. In case case of the Stowicki, um, Sheldon's um, 
subdivision that was a different that was a developer but they were the applicant did you hear me yeah yep, yep. okay yep. <laughs> what he's trying to think of what you said that's all at least i am is that so uh the well, applicant is not necessarily the developer Right, okay. but but later, but later, you know, if there's there's a problem with that subdivision, uh, the applicant, if you're using an applicant that's uh, submitting the application, uh, he has to get he or she has to get permission from the owner of that land in order to subdivide it. So, so it's not like an act. An applicant, Joe Blow, not owning the land, wants to develop it, and it's not his, his or hers. You know. That's well, I would mind. assume that if there were if there were two individuals involved, it would actually be the other way around. That the applicant would be the owner, and the developer might be in the employee of the applicant. That seems That's, like a more logical way that there would be two individuals. Right. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the, the, the answer to the question is I can phrase it however the commission likes. Uh, it, it is a fairly minor point. I, it is, I am of the opinion that the phrase an applicant or developer has better clarity uh, than either one of them on their own or one with a slash, which implies okay. that they are the same person. So you would el eliminate the, the second line of that, the, and just put any applicant or developer has the duty? Yes. No, I'm good with that then. Okay, moving on. Everybody Section three, says. purposes. Uh, these regulations are adopted for the following purposes. A, to provide, to protect and provide for the public health, safety, and general welfare of the municipality. Any comments or objections? B, to guide the future growth and development of the municipality in accordance with the plan of conservation and development. Comment. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, the, are, you, are we saying here to guide the future growth and development uh, in, municipal, in accordance? In other words, if the plan subdivision is, is not in accordance with the plan of development, it can't be. Uh, it's a good question, John. The, plan, the POCD is a guidance document. Right. And the, the purpose of the POCD in the eyes of the state is to provide a platform from which the other actual regulatory documents are created. In other words, we actually kind of did our process kind of bass backwards. We should have done the POCD first and then done the regulations, but the, the hand that we were dealt with to do them in the other, in the other order. Um, uh, I'm, I'm it, it is the intention of the state that those, that those POCDs uh, guide the development of land use regulations. Yeah, so, right. I, I agree with the, you know, the, as, as a guide, Okay, but when it, if you say an in accordance, doesn't that mean it has to be? In no, words, so just put it. If there's something in the POCD uh, that the developer says I ain't doing that, then hey, too bad. You got to do it because you have to be in a, in accordance with the POCD. So just put in a, in accordance with the guide guidance from the plan of develop plan of conservation and development well even without in court uh, in accordance just in well it's somehow just, in uh, so referencing then, the pocd consi how about consistent with well i would say guidance consistent yeah i, I would prefer the guidance too because being consistent is is saying you know you're not being consistent you have to match saying. <laughs> yeah it's it's kind of okay, makes it so, matter so leave out the word accordance. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, well, it's still got to make sense linguistically. Right. So to guide the future growth and development of the municipalities 
according to the guidance of the POCV. Yeah. Better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. C, to provide for adequate light, air, and privacy to secure safety from fire, flood, and other danger, and to prevent overcrowding of the land and undue congestion of population. As you can see, I plopped a couple of notes over here. Uh, I think privacy may be too subjective a term to include there. I mean, one person's privacy is another person's, oh my God, you're so close to me. Uh, and in terms of the undue congestion of population, um, we talked about a lot of stuff about population density in the regulations process. Um, and that that was, we, we leaned away from referring to concentrations of persons uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, you know, what's a large family? People don't usually have 12 kids anymore, but people did, people do. Uh, you know, we, the, the congestion of population seemed like a thing that was potentially something that could be used as discriminatory language and also not necessarily land use, whereas overcrowding of the land specifically refers back to the land and its use. Um, it is my recommendation to strike both of those terms, but it is up to you guys. Thoughts, gentlemen? I, you know, I, I, I with you, I don't like the word privacy. I do in a sense that, you know, if we could control somewhat, you know, you know, we're trying to get back to, well, the thing of it is in the town, when you have different areas in town uh, that we're trying to keep representative, whether it's the Milltown district, which is uh, developed and, uh, uh, I don't know, more, I don't want to say congested, but it is in a sense that uh, versus say the Thompson Hill, that it's opened up and, you know, that type of thing where people would probably want some kind of regulation of privacy. Now, with that privacy, thinking about a subdivision uh, that an individual applicant comes in puts it down, gives us a plan for uh, subdivision, 12 homes, and I live next door to you live next door to that uh, thing should, is would we be able to use that term privacy to have them put up uh, some kind, not necessarily a fence, but uh, shrubbery or something to protect the neighbor? You know, yeah, I mean, you, you do have those stipulations in your regulations. I don't think there's anything wrong with requesting buffers, landscape buffers. That was, that was the are, term I was using. I, I was just thinking of that if we're going to uh, require or ask a developer to put a buffer in is that we could fall back on, well, this falls in under the term of privacy, you know? That makes um, sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I, see, I, I see where you're headed. Uh, I'm just looking for something to fall back when we make regulations or tell the developer, well, you know, you got to protect the neighbor, you know, put up a screen he doesn't want to look at, he or she doesn't want to look at 15 new homes there, you know? Yeah, I, I do see what you're saying, John. Um, it's just the subjectivity of the term that bothers me. But if, if you guys want to leave it there, that is your, your right to do. Uh, like I say, I, I would like to get away from things that, personally, I, I would like to get away from things in our regulatory language that have to do with human behavior and desire because you can't be in somebody's head uh, and like I say, one person's privacy is another person's wide open space. You know, I live in where I live. And, and for me, this is a huge lot. Uh, but if I look out one side, I could see into my neighbor's windows if I really tried. But compared to some of the places I've lived, that's still super wide open. That's what I'm saying, that the subjectivity is, is really high there. Uh, 
uh, as opposed to overcrowding of land, which has to do with what the land will support, for example, in terms of water and septic separations, uh, you know, permeability, that kind of thing. I, I, it would be my inclination, and again, it's up to whatever you guys decide, uh, to stay away from anything that talks about human perception. Yeah. It's just that I want to be able to fall back on something if we wanted the uh, developer to provide a screen uh, from the neighbor. And that's that's pretty much why we have 13 people on a commission is that it's not just my, my interpretation of what it is, but uh, we could decide as a commission, say, yeah, put up a screen or, or not to, you know? So I-, I keep Well, what, what, do the other, what do the other three commissioners who are here tonight think if, about that? Well, Mr. Rice has got a good, a good point there if it warrants it. In other words, it, it, we could look at it as, it, in my perspective, it warrants it for to have the developer or whatever to put up some type of a barrier, you know, like tree, you know, those, uh, what do you call those trees that they can plant and they can grow eight feet high, you know, but they're Arbor, natural. Arbor, arborvitis. Thank you. And, you know, they become a natural fence, you know, but they're natural. They're not like putting up a wooden fence or, or whatever. And they can grow, I think, eight to 10 feet high, you know, or if you keep them trimmed a little bit and you can keep them at 10 feet. So that becomes a natural barrier. Again. All right. You know, so let, let's, let me change the question a little bit then. Is the sentence better uh, or is it a sentence that you guys are more comfortable with to change it to read instead uh, to provide for adequate light, air, and privacy, to secure safety from fire, flood, and other danger, and to pre prevent overcrowding of the land, and then cut it there. Uh, that, I, that, that would make a little bit more sense. Yeah, I would go along with that, because I think undue congestion. Yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily need that, I don't think. Although, if that's one of our goals, and uh, in subdivisions is try to uh, prevent or control congestion of the population <laughs> in just in one particular area. You know, it's just right, but, but you still can't you you still can't do that with yeah. persons. You use the example of a large family. I mean, I use 12, which is a ridiculous number, but somebody with six kids, seven kids. I mean, there are still families that big, not many. Uh, you can't tell a person who moves into a house that they can't have that. That's congestion of population. The, the governing piece that is within your, definitely within your statutory authority and probably within your moral authority is the undue crowding of structures, buildings, features on the land. It's a land use body, not a human behavior body. Hmm. Yeah. It's throwing a wrinkle in it big time. No, well. so, so what's the it's issue? Well, the so just, issue is, uh, do, we, do, we ex do we accept keeping privacy and striking undue congestion of population? You strike with, with, with your premise just now, you, you strike in undue congestion of population because, like you said, it's a land use, it's not a people use. Right. Are we good with that? Privacy, you know, I, I sort of go along with John and John, so if you want my opinion, even though I don't have a vote. <laughs> your, your opinion matters. You, you, Thank you. <laughs> you. No, really, think about it. I mean, you've been around this long enough. And, you know, and, and from what my perspective is, from what I've done all my life out there, you know, with construction and, you know, doing, putting in uh, subdivisions like up in Dudley there, you know, we got a developer come in and, you know, blow out, we blow out around and you can put in, put in a horseshoe road and first thing you know you got you got like 
30 houses going in there on both, you know, in the middle and on the sides. So, but again, it's how big are the lots going to be? And then you're going to, you know, what are the, what size of the houses are going to be like two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom, which constitute what Tara just said is, is a family of six, you know, or whatever. So it, 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 it comes down to, it's going to, come down to the point is if it's going to be a family of six you know it's going to be a good size house so you know you're going to have people on my house is this size and this one's this size and you know i don't want to look at this or whatever so you know it it becomes a like a catch-22 in my opinion but i would would vote on take that out yeah, I, I, my input is I think it's a duplicate, overcrowding the land, undue congestion of population. It's almost like a second statement of overcrowding the land. Good point. It, it sort of is redundant, uh, but in in its literal in its literal meaning, it is slightly different. But I I think I hear consensus that we're going to keep privacy, strike uh, undue congestion of population. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, moving on. D, to protect the character and the social and economic stability of all parts of the municipality and to encourage the orderly and beneficial development of the community through appropriate growth management techniques, assuring the timing and sequencing of development, promotion of infill development in existing neighborhoods and non-residential areas with adequate public facilities, to assure proper urban form and open space separation of urban areas, to protect environmentally critical areas and areas premature for urban development. And as you can see, I highlighted this term to protect the character. And in my note, uh, and this is, this is true, character um, is a subjective term, but more importantly, there is a movement to legally prohibit its inclusion in land use documents because of its subjectivity. Um, I have suggested, and it's not in here because I scribbled in my notes, uh, changing the term to, uh, instead of the way it reads now, to have it read, to protect the physical resilience and the economic stability of all parts of the municipality. Uh, Again, because I think that deals more with the actual features of the land and the physical use of the land. Um, I, I think it's a more neutral and more mission specific term, but again, open for your discussion. So you, uh, Terry, you, what you're saying is you're taking out the, the, the words, the character and the social. Yes. Okay. That makes that, that, that makes it a little bit a better. Uh... I'll, I'll read it again, just for, just for clarity to protect the physical resilience and the economic stability of all parts of the, the municipality. That sounds is a what I'm suggesting. See, in your view, Tara or anybody else, uh, how do you define character? Exactly, that's the problem. <laughs> By your own moral, st- moral code. <laughs> well, to, to, oh, to me, to, to me, fun. if you, to me, there's, uh, you know, if you look at, at the character of, of the town, uh, wouldn't you say, you know, like downtown is more like the mill complex type thing. You go to Mechanicsville, it's more a little bit urban. You go to Th- Thompson Center and, and the character of, of these areas I, I, I think just by the development that's in those area, is, doesn't that uh, say what the character of the area is? Yeah, well, that's why the term has lingered in land use documents for so long. Um, but it is absolutely true that at the state level, they are discussing prohibiting its use in land use documents. And that right. is because there are a number of towns that have used that term to protect the character to specifically try to uh, create hurdles for mixed oh. income and affordable housing development. It's, in other words, it's a term that has been used as a weapon against people proposing developments 
<clears throat> in areas where there's high levels of nimbyism. So whether you agree with whether it's a, an appropriate term or not, uh, it is entirely possible that in the short term, the term is going to be prohibited from use in land use regulations, in which case you'd have to go back and strike it. Right. Um, I'd, I'd prefer to do that. Wait till the government says that. Because if I look at I look at the characters, say, uh, like Thompson Hill, if McDonald's, you want to put a McDonald's right across from the common or uh, somebody, I, wouldn't that change the character of the area or vice versa? Well, it, it would, but you've already, it would, but you've already prohibited that in your yeah. zoning regulations. So in other words, you do, you do protect the character by the creation of your regulations, but the use of the term character because of its subjectivity creates problems for people who come in conflict. As opposed to something that is measurable and objective. Yeah, you would. What was is your proposed language, Vera? I'm, I'm sorry. Saying, what was that? What was your proposed language again? To protect. To protect the physical resilience and the economic stability of all parts of the municipality. Yada yada yada. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm good with that. How about anybody else? Yep, sounds good. Yeah, I like it. Okay. I like it. Okay. Yeah. Alvin, you're pretty quiet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I, agree. Resilient. I agree with that. Sorry to I wake you up. I just agree. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, and let's welcome uh, Bruce Woodis, who's joined us this evening. Hi, Bruce. We're having a, a rousing discussion on page one. Okay. Uh, okay, moving on to letter E, to protect and conserve the value of land throughout the municipality and the value of buildings and improvements upon the land and to minimize the conflicts among the uses of land and buildings. I thought that was fine. Any comments or objections here? Moving on, letter F. To guide public and private policy and action in order to provide adequate and efficient transportation, water, sewerage, schools, parks, playgrounds, recreation, and other public requirements and facilities. Any comments or objections? Letter G. To provide the most beneficial relationship between the uses of land and buildings and the circulation of traffic throughout the municipality, having particular regard to the avoidance of congestion in the streets and highways and the pedestrian traffic movements appropriate to the various uses of land and buildings and to provide for the proper location and width of streets and building lines. Comments or objections? Again, Letter you, got, Go you, ahead. Got, you got that word congestion, does that bother you? Not in the terms of uh, traffic congestion. I mean, I think that there is a pretty clear, I think there's a pretty clear uh, authority of planning and zoning to consider traffic patterns. Yeah, the streets, highways, pedestrian traffic. If anything, I would change this to non-vehicular traffic to include cyclists and horses and skateboarders or whatever, but I, I think pedestrian traffic is fine in this context. Well, I, 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 I would probably want to add that. Uh, in that ho hopefully down the road, you know, there's more uh, cyclists, there's, uh, you know, these, uh, things that they have, I don't know, uh, with the bicyclism, maybe that'd be something they have in town. Like, you, as you know, the Speedway has a big, you know, rendezvous with cyclists that brings people into town and uh, development of the trails. Maybe that'll be, uh, you know, using the railroad beds and stuff. So 
I don't know if you could fit yep, that. I can, a, I can change. Yeah, I can change that term to non-vehicular. I'd be totally in favor of that. It's more inclusive. Yeah. Okay. Well, the more things we can add to do things in town and encourage it, you know, I think it'd be good. Excellent. Letter H, to establish reasonable standards of design and procedures for subdivisions and resubdivisions in order to further the orderly layout and use of land and to ensure proper legal descriptions and monumenting of subdivided land. Comments or objections? Good. Letter I, to ensure that public facilities and services are available concurrent with development and will have a sufficient capacity to serve the proposed subdivision and that the community will be required to bear no more than its fair share of the cost of providing the facilities and services through requiring the developer to pay fees, furnish land, or establish mitigation measures to ensure that the development provides its fair share of capital facilities needs generated by the development. That's a very strange sentence. It doesn't read well, but. Well, you're a good at from letter I? Well, yeah, I think that covers it. In other words, if it's gonna, uh, the, the only thing I have with that is see, it seems like uh, further on in, in different areas here, uh, suggestion is to uh, eliminate town roads and go into a subdivision uh owning the roads and maintaining them i don't know how that that goes with this um so i'm not by the way i'm not in favor i kind of like you know you put 12 houses up and uh the town should own the road maintain it and the taxpayers uh in that subdivision is doing their equal share but that's for another discussion now <laughs> A few more pages down. <laughs> yeah, well, you are aware of my argument against accepting any further town roads based on the fact that we can't afford what we already have. Well, uh, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the mandate. From who? There's not a mandate to stop that. Well, we just hire more people, that's all. They got to figure it out, you know? <laughs> That's on the uh, highway department more needs more people to do that to plow or do do something. But, right, so that would cost more. That's that's the whole point, John. It's yeah. that we cannot we cannot afford, based on our current tax base, to well, maintain at a proper level public infrastructure that we have, and that is the the reason. Then, then maybe that the we tax strongly recommended not adding any more town roads. Who, and, who's who's strongly recommended? Time, can you, uh, can you the, identify? The 30 people, yeah, the 30 people who just worked on that 200 page document setting oh. out goals for the next 10 years. Yeah, all right. So what are we talking about? What you're talking about, or are we talking about I? I'm We're talking about I. Okay. <laughs> but I no, I'm just looking down the road that is that, you know, if that's, you know, that was proposed and, you know, that's a lot of the talk uh, as was put in that POCD that we can't afford any more roads, we can't do this. And uh, this doesn't, this seems like the, uh, the developer, uh, uh, let me see, no more, to bear no more of its fair share, well, he doesn't have to, he's going to bear more of his fair share if he has to take care of everything in that development, no? No, what this is saying is that the community, meaning the municipality, will be required to bear no more than its fair share. So it, it, you can make the argument in several directions. What the POCD <laughs> is stating is that we already are not recouping the fair share if we were to make it truly fair in terms of the burden that each resident had to had to carry, the taxation in this town would go would through the roof, right? We know that we have a, a community that is strongly against raising their individual tax burdens to do more with what we already have. So if you extend that logic 
then it would be irresponsible to add things that we cannot pay for with our current levels of taxation. And it, we're actually not suggesting in the POCD, nor will we suggest later here, that new roads are to be strictly prohibited. They're to be disincentivized, in other words, to make it more favorable from the point of view of, de of a developer to subdivide and create either a private road or a shared driveway. And there's all kinds of reasons to do that. We can get into that when we get into the meat of, the, of those sections later on. Um, but those are the arguments there. I would say that I actually have a point that's not entirely unrelated on this, which just has to do with the opening statement there, to ensure that public facilities and services are available concurrent with the development. Well, public facilities are barely available now. There is little to no, well, not no, there is very little uh, public utility access. And we are not in a position to add a great deal of access into outlying districts. That's one of the reasons we want to try to drive concentrations of structural density towards the districts that do have that access. You know, and under the current taxation levels, the road maintenance, although Rich does a great job, is extremely limited. So you're always gonna have even at our current levels, overall, a substandard maintenance pattern. You can't make it a better maintenance pattern by adding more to maintain. So how do we move the town forward? It's, it sounds like it's just gonna be stagnant because we can't, can't afford it. No, you it move the right. town forward by, by driving the development to the districts that you've identified as being able to bear more density of building, the ones that are already served by the public utility. If you drive your density down there, you keep asphalt out of the outlying districts, you reduce the curb cuts, you reduce the impermeable surface, that's a sustainable growth pattern. I'm, I'm just, sir, I'm just thinking of the, you know, you're talking, in order to the, the growth of the current areas, all these highly developed areas, most of the, all the ones that are served by water and sewer are pretty much developed. I'll maxed bet you, out. There's, there's probably a half. They're a nowhere half. near maxed out. There's probably <laughs> half a dozen lot, lots that are, that are, that are available. Other than the large one, of course, the mill, but in Gronadale. So yeah. it, well, that, that's a separate conversation. Let's let's yeah, really and we is. will get into that later into this document. Let's let's continue a okay, pace stop, here. Stop, stop, stop. All right, let's we can finish this page. Stop. Yeah, stop. it'd be nice to get through like two or three, like one page for each commissioner. If we can get through page four, I'm going to consider it bonus material. Uh, to prevent the pollution of air, streams, and ponds, to assure the adequacy of drainage facilities, to safeguard the water table, and to encourage the wise use and management of natural resources throughout the municipality in order to preserve the integrity, stability, and beauty of the community and the value of the land. Any comments or objections there? I'm good. Letter K, to preserve the natural beauty and topography of the municipality and to ensure appropriate development with regard to these natural features. Letter L, to provide for open spaces through the most efficient design and layout of the land, including the use of average density in providing for minimum width and area of lots while preserving the density of development as established in the zoning ordinances, except that's really regulations. Zoning regulations of the municipality. Any comments there? All right, look at that, we're to section four. Section four, interpretation, conflict, separability, and appeals. A, interpretation. In their interpretation and application, the provisions of these regulations shall be held to be the minimum requirements for the promotion of the public health, safety, and general welfare. These regulations shall be construed broadly to promote the purposes for which they are adopted. <laughs> Pretty innocuous. Anybody have anything there? Here, I just want to go back one. I'm sorry to go back 
the, the municipality, no, okay. can, can we call it, can you, can we call it Thompson because it's a Thompson document or do we have to be generic and say no. municipality? No, that's, you know, that's, these documents end up getting like formal speak. Okay. There's no reason we can't call it Tom's. I mean, there's some places where you want to mix it up stylistically, but no, there's no, there's no requirement to call it the municipality <laughs> instead of the town or the town of Thompson or Thompson. I, I think it gets more personal. I don't, you know, it's not like boilerplate municipality, but my input. I like that input. Personal touch. Uh, did anybody have anything on A? I think it's pretty, again, pretty boilerplate, to use Dave's term. B, public provisions. These regulations are not intended to interfere with, abrogate, and that should clearly be or, annul any other ordinance, rule, or regulation, statute, or other provision of law except as provided in these regulations, where any provision of these regulations imposes restrictions different from those imposed by any other provision of these regulations or any other ordinance, rule or regulation or other provision of law, the provision which is the more restrictive or imposes the higher standards shall control. I think that's pretty standard fare. C, private provisions. These regulations are not intended to abrogate any easement covenant or any other private agreement or restriction provided that where the provisions of these regulations are more restrictive or impose higher standards or regulations than such easement, covenant, or other private agreement or restriction, the requirements of these regulations shall govern. Where the provisions of the easement, covenant, or private agreement or restriction imposes duties and obligations more restrictive, or standards that are higher than the requirements of these regulations, or the determinations of the Planning and Zoning Commission or the governing body in approving a subdivision, or in enforcing these regulations, or the determinations made under these regulations, then the private provisions shall be operative and supplemental to these regulations and the determinations made under the regulations. That is a whole lot of mouthful, uh, but I think probably fairly standard language if I were to guess. Cindy, what's your feeling there? It sounds like the kind of legalese gobbledygook that you see in the statutory language yes. all the time. Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> is there any way you could downsize that whole thing and still keep the integrity of what you just read? We Maybe. I mean, I can, yeah. I can certainly I look mean, at it. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll sidebar it here to see if I can simplify. I'm uh, just, you know, I, I bet you, you, you must have said the word regulations about seven times in this whole paragraph, you know? Oh yeah. Stylistically it's garbage, but you know, we it, it, it's not all about style points, <laughs> but yes, no, I will but, look at that and see if I can condense it, John. That, you know, I'm just saying it would, it would, you know, it would simplify it a little bit better, but still have the direct meaning, you know, meaning of it. I will do my level best. Because you could have put me to sleep on that paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Letter D, separability. If any part or provision, let's see how many times we say regulations here. If any part or provision of these regulations or the application of these regulations to any person or circumstances is adjudged invalid by any court of competent jurisdiction, the judgment shall be confined in its operation to the part, provision, or application directly involved in the controversy in which the judgment shall be rendered and it shall not affect or impair the validity of the remainder of these regulations or the application of them to other persons or circumstances. The governing body hereby declares that it would have enacted the remainder of these regulations even without any such part, provision, or application, which is judged to be invalid. Again, I think that is pretty standard legalese. Um, you you really can take out, you, you, you can take out the first, um, in the first sentence, if any yep. part or provision or application of these regulations, you can take out that first regulation. You can cut that Good sentence call. short. Look at that. We've accomplished something. <laughs> All right. E, appeals. 
Appeals may be made in accordance with Section 8-28 and 8-30 of Chapter 126 of the Connecticut State Statutes as amended. That's pretty plain. Section 5, Saving Provision. These regulations shall not be construed as abating any action now pending under or by virtue of prior existing subdivision regulations or as discontinuing, abating, modifying, or altering any penalty accruing or about to accrue or as affecting the liability of any person, firm, or corporation or as waiving any right of the municipality under any section or provision existing at the time of adoption of these regulations or as vacating or annulling any rights obtained by any person, firm, or corporation by lawful action of the municipality, except as shall be expressly provided for in these regulations. Ugh. I mean, I know what that means, but... Again, I think we're in like legalese land here. I don't like it, but I don't know that I can change that much. Would that be something you want to check with uh, council on check it? with Rich? No. Yes. You, can, you can do that or compare it with uh, what it says in chapter 126. Compare. That too. It's probably better than chapter 126. The statutes are terrible. But yes, I'll look at that chapter 126. Okay. Section six, reservation and repeals. Upon the adoption of these regulations according to law, the subdivision regulations of Thompson, Connecticut supersede regulations previously in effect. That's pretty basic. Uh, unless, well, although I did actually make a separate note that didn't make it in here. Uh, I think it would be more clear to say, upon the adoption of these regulations according to law, this edition of the subdivision regulations of Thompson, Connecticut supersede regulations previously if in effect. That seems to me to be more clear, but. A little bit more to the point. Yeah, well. Section seven amendments for the purpose of protecting public health, safety and general welfare. The Planning and Zoning Commission may from time to time propose amendments to these regulations, which shall then be approved or disapproved by the Planning and Zoning Commission at a public meeting following a public hearing and with public notice. Pretty straightforward. Section eight, waivers, where the commission finds that extraordinary hardships or practical difficulties may result from compliance with these regulations. It may approve waivers to these subdivision regulations so that substantial justice may be done and the public interest secured provided that such waiver shall not have the effect of nullifying the intent and purpose of these regulations, and further provided the commission shall not approve waivers unless it shall make findings based upon evidence presented to it in each specific case that, one, granting the waiver will not, although I would change that to shall not, be detrimental to the public health safety or self public safety, health, or welfare, or have a significant adverse effect upon other adjacent property. Two, the conditions upon which the request for a waiver is based are unique to the property for which the waiver is sought and are not applicable generally to other property. Three, because of the phys uh, particular physical surroundings, shape, or topographical conditions of the specific property involved, a particular hardship to the owner would result as distinguished from a mere inconvenience if these regulations are carried out. Four, with the concurrence of the NDDH, the commission may waive the required submission of certain data required for a sanitation report under sanitary requirements, Article 4, Section 11B, when not deemed essential to make a decision on the application. Uh, in addition to this note that I have on the side, this is something that, um, not this particular item, but in general, I told you we got some comments back from uh, David Held. 
key in all of the sections that referred to all of the complicated requirements that we've laid out for the sanitary reports made the point that nobody at the local level actually does any of that, that it's NDDH who governs that. Uh, and he recommended striking pretty much all of that language in favor of just referencing that NDDH re approval is required. Um, in that case, this provision would be moot if that is the logic that the commission later chooses to accept. Um, now, that's a whole long section and I think should be discussed with the you know, a, a larger group of the commission when we get to it. Um, but I do raise it here as something that we should be keeping in mind. And Cindy and I talked about that a little. Cindy, you're in agreement there, right? Yes, I am. I am. Dave, you look like you have something to say. No, I just had a niche. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was reading it again. I was trying to wrap my head around it as you were talking with, you know, Cindy agreed with it and what David said. I did send out Dave's, the, the comments that Dave added, right? I got that to everybody today, this afternoon. I believe I saw it in my email. I've been like board meetings all day, so. Yeah, no, that's okay. I, I was pretty sure that I had time to add Dave's comments, but not enough time to add Carolyn's. John, did you um, did you see those today? What's your what's your your initial oh, thought? Although we're going to discuss it more I, later. I haven't seen them. We'll probably come tomorrow. It's, okay. for, for whatever reason, it's always at several hours. I didn't look in the last few hours, but I didn't get it this morning. I can tell you. No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't get it. To, I got the last one I got from you, Tierra, was. The, you're asking John about the, you talked about Rich Benoit and uh, special meeting agenda, but I didn't see anything about okay. Dave Holt's comments today. Okay, so I did not send that out today. All right, I, I get confused myself sitting at that desk, which things I send and which things I don't. I know I've got them in this draft that's that's up on the screen. Um, so like I said, it, it's not in this item. This isn't one, one where he flagged, but if if the commission follows that logic later in the document, this would be an item that would go away or be substituted for, you know, NDDH <coughs> approval is required and whatever that happens to be. Okay. Uh, Just a comment on, on this number four. It, you know, yeah. are, are we on number four? Because I'm watching basketball at the same time here, but. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yes, we're still on I'm number just take, four. I'm just taking three. a break in between David and I. We're the only ones making a comment, so I figured I'd give somebody else a break. Uh, you're on number four. It says, with the concurrence of the NDDH, if the commission uh, feels that something isn't necessary, uh, you know, we, I'm reading that we would suggest that to the NDDH, and we just can't arbitrarily say, okay, let's let's waive this three foot uh, requirement for to put the drainage in for the septic system, uh, the, the leach field is the proper word, um, is that say, if we say, no, it only needs 50 feet. Well, uh, you know, we would bounce it off and the NDDH says no, but I think if we, as a commission would look at these things and say, well, I don't think, we don't think it's necessary. But there again. But you would never, you would never be in the position of overriding the NDDH. Right, but we could suggest to them that that wasn't necessary. Because I'll tell you, I don't think uh, NDDH comes out to all of these subdivisions and particularly uh, inspect some. <laughs> oh, let's 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 ask a let's ask a designer who's on the line. Hey, Bruce Woodis. Well, I know they, there? I know they come out and look at them, but uh, it's just that's why it's in the regulations that if we see something as a commission say, I don't think this is necessary, let's bounce it off NDDH and see what they think. 
So the the question the, the question that I asked you to come on and and uh, contribute to Bruce is, you know, your experience with the thoroughness of NDDH's process uh, in reviewing at building applications, subdivision applications, whatever the case may be. Um, uh, so in regards to uh, your regulations, the health department provides a very thorough review uh, of the suitability for uh, building development on the lots, on the plans that they review. Uh, so in my opinion, your subdivision regulations should defer to the health department. And that's okay. consistent with, with what Dave Held suggested and you know, the logic of it, I find solid. And I think Cindy agreed with me earlier today that essentially you're creating a layer of regulatory language, which is almost moot because if the NDDH changes their standards and we don't change ours, well, guess whose standards are going to apply? <laughs> it's, it's going to be the health department. That's absolutely. So you, cre you, you create the possibility of, you know, irregularities that then have to be interpreted. Bruce, question for you. When Very the uh, NDDH is looking at it, aren't they particular, really looking at the soil types of the area? They're, well, <clears throat> so in, in order for a lot to be approved, you have to do soils testing in conjunction with the health department, meaning that you have to dig at least two deep test pits and a perk test in the area of the proposed septic system. Right. And then we have to utilize the soils test results as a basis of sanitary design. And we have to actually do like three quarters of a septic system design for the site plan that we prepare that goes along. Oh, with the by the time, by the no. Do you change? Do you change your voice, bros? Yeah, <laughs> my my dogs just heard Cindy's dog. Shush. <laughs> um, stop. It's okay. It's it's on TV. <laughs> stop. Um, so the, the reality is, is, is that no. the health department no. requires a very complete design, uh, even if it's conceptual in nature, uh, to prove that the lot is developable and buildable. And so, in my opinion, the subdivision regulations should strictly say that approval of the site plan that goes with the subdivision plans is required. Uh, you know, a plan review is required by the health department and, and approval. End of story. It should be very simple. And you can't get your building permit or your zoning permit without that NDDH approval, correct? That is correct. Now, I can get a zoning permit with a a plan review by the health department, but I can't get a building permit without a permit to construct, which is almost the same thing as a plan review, except that it requires the actual uh, formal house plans, uh, you know, prepared by the builder or the architect. But the, the reality is, is that when we submit a, a site plan or a subdivision plan to the health department for review, they they review it for all the technical standards. And if, if it's approvable, approvable, approvable by the health department, then it should be approvable by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay. And that, that does mirror you know, the feedback that we got from, 
from the other outside engineer and, and yeah, the logic problem. of the conversation that Cindy and I pursued today. Yeah, you know, I think some of your language there could be simplified. Uh, I don't, I don't have the exact language in mind, but I think it could be simplified. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Anything else there, John? So why don't we bite the bullet just and right now eliminate that number four? I'm perfectly okay with that. I agree. I agree. Leave, leave it. Let, let whatever the N NDDH feels is adequate or, or whatever. To, I think, you know, it's on their shoulders and it take and it, it keeps it away from us. So we don't have to, you know, get involved with that. We'll cover that when I we like get it. to the other section. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll cover that in more depth. But yes, I think we can plan on that item going away. Okay, moving on. Letter B. The waiver will not in any manner, I'm going to change that to shall not because will not is not a meaningful term. Uh, the waiver shall not in any manner conflict with the provisions of the zoning regulations, plan of development or regulations of any other board or commission. John Rice, before you even say it, you are absolutely right. That is not an appropriate place to say that it shall not conflict with provisions of the POCD. That is not a regulatory document. See, I anticipated your objection. Oh, I don't want to tell you, I wasn't paying attention. I was looking. I was going to say, you're looking at the basketball game here. You put enough to write in there. <laughs> I can tell you what the score is. I can tell he you what the been, score is. He should have been listening. I told him he was right. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I was listening when you said I was right. I, I, <laughs> Gloria, pulled that in the meeting minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, where were we here? Uh, well, Are we leaving it in this, or the end of it? Moving it? Uh, the plan of development is going to be struck because it's an inappropriate place for it. Okay. Uh, C, in approving waivers, the commission may require such conditions as will, in its judgment, secure substantially the objectives of the standards or requirements of these regulations. That's fine. D, petitions for any such waiver shall be submitted in writing by the subdivider at the time when the subdivision plan is filed for the consideration of the commission. The petition shall state fully the grounds for the application and all of the facts called upon by the petitioner. The commission shall hold a public hearing before acting on any such request. A three quarters vote of the total members of the commission shall be required to approve a waiver and the commission shall state on its records the reasons for granting the waiver. Didn't we in the, um, and this just occurred to me, no. when there was similar language like that in the zoning regulations, didn't uh, town council say that the reasons for granting the waiver is something you shouldn't include? in your regulations, that in fact you can state them if you want, but including it in your re regulations locks you into it. I seem to recall that. Anybody else? I don't recall that. I do recall something like that. Um, so I had to put some thought into that then. I'll go back and look, because I still have all those notes I got from Rich. I'll go back and double check that, but I'm gonna flag that because I'm pretty sure that we struck similar language in the zoning regulations for that very purpose. Tara, if, okay. if we're keeping it, do we have to specify like we did up further, either owner or developer, or is the subdivider good enough? Yeah. Hold on, let me go back petition. and read that. Yeah, let me go back and read that. Petitions for any such waiver shall be submitted in writing by the subdivider. I think that should be applicant. Yeah, something a little clarity. The applicant owner, just for. Well, I would stick with I would stick with applicant developer. Oh yeah. Consistently throughout the whole 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 um, document. Okay. Yep, I've got that note right here. Then applicant or developer to remain consistent. I like that. All right, just to the end of page four, and then we can call it a wrap, guys, because that's all of section one. Look at all the article one. Look at the progress. Uh, we just got through that. So section nine, enforcement, violations, and penalties. Cindy, pay close attention. We're in your territory. 
<laughs> a, general, it shall be the duty of the zoning enforcement officer to the planning and zoning commission, that should be of the planning and zoning commission, of the planning and zoning commission to enforce these requirements and to bring to the attention of the commission any violations of these regulations. Do you concur with that statement, Cindy? Yes, that sounds good. Very good. Two, no owner or agent of the owner of any parcel of the land located in a proposed subdivision shall transfer or sell any part of the parcel before final plat of the subdivision has been approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission in accordance with the provisions of these regulations. Uh, and you'll see that I have that highlighted twice. Alvin had asked if we can use the term plan there. I think that I need to find out, Alvin, if there is a legal reason to use that term. Certainly more people know. Who is that? Certainly more people know what a plan is than a plat, but. Uh, is, is, is that actually, a, that's actually a word, plat? I plat it was is definitely a word. I thought it was a misspelling, so. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, it's called, it's a plot of land. Plat yeah. is a, the definition is a plot of land. Uh, yeah, might, so the, the, if I might. the question is, is there a legal distinction between the term plat and plot or plan, right? So we'll find uh, out. If I might, this is Bruce. Um, I, plat is synonymous with the term map or plan. Plat is commonly used for a map uh, as a term for a map in other parts of the country. Interesting. So, you, so you think that is sufficiently clear and perhaps clearer than an alternate term? You could say plat or plan uh, okay. if, you, if you wanted to make sure that you covered it, but uh, plat is a, is a term that is used out there. Okay. Very good. You know, design professionals know what the word plat means. Right. Uh, number three, the subdivision of any lot or parcel of land by the use of meets and bounds description for the purpose of sale, transfer, lease, or development is prohibited. Do you concur with that statement, Cindy? Because this is the enforcement bit. Right. Sure. If, if, that's, a, if that's a standard policy, absolutely, yeah. Four, no building permit shall be issued for the construction of any building or structure located on a lot or plat, subdivided or sold in violation of the provisions of these regulations, nor shall the municipality have any obligation to issue certificates of occupancy or to extend utility services to any parcel created in violation of these regulations. Definitely, yes. Uh, very good. Uh, B, violations and penalties. Any person making a subdivision or resubdivision of land without approval of the Thompson Planning and Zoning Commission shall be subject to the penalties provided in the Connecticut General Statutes, and the town and the commission may seek other remedies as provided by the laws of the state of Connecticut. Yeah. Yep. All right, last two items for tonight, and then we'll call it a wrap. Section 10, revision and effective date, A, regulation slash revision. The regulations and any amendments or changes thereto shall be in full force and effect from the date established by the commission in accordance with the general statutes of the state of Connecticut. The adoption of this amendment, I think that should be any amendment. The adoption of any amendment shall not render as conforming or legal any previous non-conforming or illegal division of land, but anything previously classified shall retain that classification except as expressly changed. We good? I think this stuff is all pretty standard. B, amendment of regulations. The subdivision regulations of the town of Thompson, Connecticut made effective by the Planning and Zoning Commission on February 3rd, 1969 and all amendments hereto are hereby amended by striking all existing language and substituting these amended regulations thereof with the effective date of these regulations. <coughs> I, I have to ask Rich about this. We, the current regulations are the fifth edition, which was adopted in, whenever it was adopted, December 22nd, 2008. Uh, 
it seems to me that that's what we're striking and replacing. I don't know, uh, John, you may have been through more than one edition of these. Was that ever brought up before? No, it's just that we, I don't know, I'm gonna get a check from you, to, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm reading this as all the other regulations. Right, but all the other regulations have already been struck. Each time you right. have it, you adopt right. a new edition, it's struck. Yeah, I think it's just a uh, just to keep track of when we started, and you know the first, second, third, fourth, fifth edition. And uh, if you want copies of all those, I have them. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I do not want copies of all those. <laughs> no, all I, right, I, uh, I, I think it's good. Okay. All right, and I'll just double check with Rich to see if if one is supposed to refer to one edition versus another. Okay, that was a good first night, guys. I know we only got through four pages, but um, it's okay. I will uh, go ahead, John. No, it's just that I thought I was running the meeting. I want to continue. Well, you were watching basketball. I am. I I can multitask. Yeah, the game just ended, so. <laughs> I'm, watching, I'm, I'm watching another one. John Linky want, wants to. Um, <laughs> UConn to lost. Really UConn lost, John. If that's what you. Oh want. damn it, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> yes. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Are we going to set a schedule for these John. meetings? Yeah, we need. I, to. I, Are you going to set a schedule? Game and I was going to watch it, and you just spoiled it for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, Bruce. <laughs> that's all right. I'll I'll know better next time. <laughs> I'll, I'll be watching it while, while we're doing the discussion next time. <laughs> um, yeah, so we did start off talking about that at the beginning of the night. Uh, now, the, the downside is that there's only, what do we got? Three, Three of you, four. four of you? There's only yeah. four of you here. So um, I don't think we can set that schedule without more input. Um, yeah. I like those doodle polls. It, it gives us you know, a way to, to get more people responding flexibly as opposed to an endless email chain, um, which gets confusing. So I can send another one out um, maybe on Monday because tomorrow I'm going to have a busy day. Uh, is everybody happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. Just, if we yeah. can get, you know, just some sort of a schedule, you know what I mean? I, I'd like to attend as many as I can and it's going to be up to like what dates or what evenings are better for everyone. Just, you know, I, I had suggested that what I suggested earlier, the Joe, and apparently it never came out is to having it at the regular meetings after the regular meetings for a couple hours till nine o'clock or something, but we'll see what they say. However you want to word, word yeah. that Tara. John, our regular meetings yeah, I mean, we till nine o'clock. Huh? Yeah, that's meetings. that's the problem with that, John. Your your meetings are long now. They haven't been short meetings in no. over a year. I I can't yeah. tell you the last time I was at a P and Z meeting that didn't go the first the, the full two hours. Right. That's how he got me on this committee. He said, "Oh, with with you know one hour meeting, one 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 Monday a month. Don't worry about it." That's that's <laughs> what it used to be until we got all these newbies in. It. <laughs> yeah, now you got people who want to do their jobs. Come on. <laughs> Oh, is that right? <laughs> okay, right. we'll leave it up to we'll leave it up to Mr. Uh, uh, Joe and uh, Tara and send it out whatever you want to do. Let's go to the next item, and I think it's a motion to adjourn. Well, wait a minute. Can I ask a question on the meetings? Uh, what is this? What are what space time time space are you looking at in between meetings? Well, you know, I like, think that's another thing we have to establish. I, I think we can. I think we can get away with monthly because I think that this is um, once a week. Once a monthly, month. Monthly, I said. A monthly, month. okay. I said. Okay. Um, I mean, I would be also willing to do every other week if we wanted to hurry the process, but I don't think we have to. I think this document is in better shape than the uh, the regular regulations were. There are sections that need substantive work, but it's, I mean, how many articles are in this? I mean, we, if we, if we try to do one article per session, 
and we've got one, two, three, four articles and a bunch of uh, and a bunch of appendices. That's a five to six month project to do a draft. I think I think we can do this in once a month. Tara, would it, is it possible that you identify the uh, the differences between the new zoning regs and the current subdivision? Then we can address those probably at the first meeting. Remember you um, said, you said there was a yeah. I mean, some of that some of that is probably already in these marginal notes. But what I will do. Uh, what I'll at least try to do for this round, and if it works well, we'll continue to do it, and if it doesn't, we won't, is I'll make the changes into the section that we just covered, uh, and I'll note those in one way, and then for the sections going forward, I'll keep these marginal notes and, you know, highlight, uh, and in some, of the, in some of the comments in the sidebars, it's already noted that it's in conflict, right? It, um, and, uh, and Alvin, for example, compared a bunch of the, um, the definitions, which is going to be the next section and said, you know, this needs to align, this needs to align. Wow. So um, I will do my best to also drop in these sidebar notes what it needs to align to to make it clearer and do that section by section. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. And, and moving forward... Can we track or whomever you and Gloria as to the changes that we're making? Okay, in other words, if you're gonna take out a specific word like the plum POCD is to line that out. So when we go to the public hearing, they'll know what we took out and what we inserted by lining. Yeah, I can do that. You know, that's the way I we've done it before. So instead of just reading what we decided, they don't know what the regulation was before. So they don't know if they want to approve it or not, you know. But if they yeah, with this it, document, I can do that. Um, it was impractical to do that with the zoning regulations because the changes were like you'd have entire pages that were redlined with <laughs> a couple of opening sentences left. With this document, um, I believe the changes are discrete enough that that should be easy to follow. Uh, but we'll figure that out after one or two sessions when you look back at, at, at how, it, how it lays out. So when we can change our mind if we want to. But yes, I think I, the short answer is yes, John, I think I can do that. Dear, I just, one question, you know, with David Held's input, you know, all the other inputs that, that's coming in Rather than have, you know, I'm waiting for John's to come in the mail and every, you know, and all the emails, is there a way to consolidate as we, you know, say we know we're, as a committee, the subcommittee is going to get together with 10, 10 pages for that evening. Could, could you consolidate everybody's comments onto one so we don't, you know, I'm not rifling through all these different comments and I only have my comments. Well, uh, so the question is, do you want them to lay out like this? Because here's an example of one I got from, from Dave Held today. It's in a different color with a different ID underneath my comment. Or would you rather I do what I did for the regulations review, which is actually write out a discussion guide with the specific points uh, that have been commented on? I can do it either way. Either way, I think just to consolidate it, I'm turn to the other commissioners and what their input is, but you know, I find this helpful the way you have it on the screen right here. And I know that, you know, emails were coming in today, even, you know, with, with people's comments, just even if it's just for the four or 10 pages, we're going to review that evening, you know, that they're up there. Yeah, and yeah, whatever. I will add them. I will add them marginally here as I receive them. Uh, and I will do my best to color code comments from different people differently. Okay. If it's Donna or Cindy or, you know, whoever's making the comments it just helps yeah i should be able to do that anybody else got anything bruce what is here um i know that in some other towns uh that i've participated in some of this review type of thing they've uh allotted time prior to their regular meeting. So in other words, if you normally would meet at seven, they would start at six 
and try and do whatever they could in you know an hour before as a as a possibility or a suggestion then that way you might get more participation also uh, i i don't mean to lengthen your meetings it's the same idea as adding on to the end but uh, it's just a suggestion something to think about yeah, I'll bring that up to uh, to Chairman Perotti um, when I sort of come back to him with the follow up of what we did tonight, because uh, he and I can discuss how he wants to format a request to the commissioners, uh, you know, and, and what, you know, if we want to propose the possibility of going every other week. Like I say, I think I think monthly here is fine, guys, but uh, you know, you got you guys are the governing body here, uh, well, but that's not a bad suggestion either, Bruce. You know, if people want to do it on the same night as a meeting night to reduce the number of nights that they're committed, an hour before is probably better than an hour after because you know absolutely. people want to go to bed. Yep. Um, so that's possible. Oh, you got to think of although you do run. Although if we had done that this Monday and we had done an hour and then done three hours for the regular meeting, I think oh. people would have died. But the point is, Sarah, 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 Sarah uh, is that uh, we nine o'clock was the deadline. If, if our regular meeting lasted till nine, then there was no additional meeting. If it started, it lasted till seven, then we stayed an extra two hours, but nine o'clock was the deadline either way. Right, but that's not what I'm saying here, John. What I'm saying is if we have a, a finite one hour session before the regular meeting, which would have a deadline, but then your regular meeting goes three hours for which you don't, you know, you have a target of nine o'clock, but you regularly go over that, uh, then that's a brutal night for the commissioners. Not so bad for me. I'm sitting in my house and I'll just go downstairs and have a snort of scotch, but... You know, some of our some of our commissioners have very early bedtimes. <laughs> uh, what, uh, Tara, why don't we stick with what you just suggested? Let's go once a month, you know, and if it when well, we're getting close to within, say, for the fourth month or the, or the fifth month, then if we have to go and double it up, you know, we'll double it up. But, you know, I mean, we shouldn't. It's going to be tough to yeah, get in, come in at six o'clock. I, I think that's reason. I think that's reasonable, John. And, and I don't think we have to kill ourselves over this document. It's it's not as heavy a lift as the last two. Not to mention, starting in March, I'm probably going to also be working on the affordable housing plan alongside it. So uh, I'm going to be in for at least probably for biweekly meetings with that because that is going to be a time crunch pro project because that's that's got uh, based on a grant award. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, and if everybody else is too, Mr. Chairman, Chairman well, Pro Tem, would you like to call for a motion? Oh, wait a minute. I got to see how this makes out of the. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, she made the shot. So we're good. Uh, motion is in order for. I'll, I'll make that motion to, to adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Commissioner? Who seconded it? Who seconded the motion? I think David, they all seconded David, it, Lori. David, <laughs> David pick somebody. Okay, I'll, I'll pick it. somebody. I heard David the Poplowski, so all in favor, aye. 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 Meeting, aye. Meeting at 839. Good work, guys. Good night, everyone. Talk to you soon. Good night. Bye, Thank everybody. You.